Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. A while back, I was driving through a neighborhood and saw this dresser sitting on the curb, destined to go to the dump. The drawers were kind of off, had a lot of chips and scratches, so it was a great candidate to be painted. Damage like this chip in the drawer and this chip on the edge here will need to get fixed before I get started on anything. The very first thing I do on all projects is remove the hardware and take out the drawers. I filled this chip in the veneer right off the bat so that by the time I got to the sanding step it'd be dry enough to be sanded. To fill the chip in I use Bondo. I just apply it where I need it, let it sit for about 30 minutes, and it's ready to sand. I didn't have a syringe to inject wood glue in here so I just broke it off, apply wood glue to both sides, and clamp it down. I believe you're supposed to let this dry for about 24 hours, but on a small repair like this, an hour or two is plenty of time. While I wait for these to dry, I'll focus on getting everything cleaned up. This piece is pretty dirty on the outside, it has a lot of dust and animal hair caked on it. To clean this up, I'm going to be using Super Clean diluted with water, and Toasty is going to be helping me. When I'm using Super Clean to prep my furniture, I just spray it on and wipe it off. You can see it deglosses the finish a little bit. It's always important to clean the furniture before you start painting it so that you can get all the dirt and grime off so it doesn't interfere with your paint's finish. Also, if you were to sand all of this before cleaning, a lot of the grime will come off on your sanding pad, gumming it up, and making you waste more supplies. Once everything was cleaned up, I moved on to sanding. I sanded out small imperfections on my repair job here. Then moved on to sanding the top. Normally when I'm sanding, I'm not trying to sand all the way down to expose the raw wood. I just want to rough up the surface to give the paint a better surface to adhere to. Sanding heavily like this means that you will get wood bleeds if you paint over it with water-based paint. So I highly recommend using spray paint, a shellac based primer or clear shellac or lacquer all of these will create a barrier in between the oil based tannins in the wood and your water based paint effectively sealing them in so that you don't have discoloration in your paint finish later on Once I'm finished sanding, I'll dust everything off, then wipe everything down with a damp rag in preparation for applying primer. I typically use flat spray paint as a primer. It not only acts as a barrier for bleeds, as I mentioned before, but it also allows you to get better coverage with your paint later on by covering up the brown with a color that more closely matches your chosen paint color. For instance, if you were going to paint something white, it would probably be a better idea to use white primer instead of gray primer. So you use less coats of white paint later on. I typically apply two to three coats of primer, giving it about 15 to 20 minutes to dry in between each coat. Remember, it's always a good idea to apply light coats rather than heavy coats. You can always apply more later if you need to. For the paint, I'm going to be using Sherwin-Williams Showcase in a satin finish. This is paint that I randomly picked off of the return paint shelf at the hardware store last year. Got it for $9. It seems to have held up well since I used it last year and the customer that bought that piece wants this piece painted the same way. So I'm also going to be brushing it using this purdy brush. Unfortunately, this can didn't come with the label. So the name of this color is a mystery. This paint covered really well, just like it did last time. I ended up only having to use two coats of paint. After I finished my first coat, I let everything sit for about 20 or 30 minutes to give it enough time to dry before I apply my second coat. 
The top had more brush strokes than I wanted so I used some 220 grit sandpaper to knock it down so my next coat would be nice and smooth. One of the reasons you get brush strokes is when your paint is drying up too fast and you overwork the paint with your brush. You can use a spray bottle full of water to mist the surface of the paint as you notice it start to dry up. This will keep the paint wet, allow you to get a smoother finish, and reduce brush strokes. Once my second coat was finished, I let it dry overnight before I started my glazing. To do that, I'm going to be applying this Minwax Dark Walnut Oil-Based Wood Stain directly over the paint and then wiping it off immediately so that it tints the paint, gets stuck in crevices and details, and gives the overall piece some extra depth. If you want to try glazing with wood stain, it's important to note that you should work in sections because it likes to dry up real fast. You should also be using a satin finish if you want to get the same effect that I I'm getting here. If you use anything with a matte finish, such as chalk paint, it'll soak up the stain and make it too difficult to wipe off. If you use a semi-gloss paint, the higher sheen doesn't allow the stain to absorb as much, so it pretty much doesn't tint the paint at all, but it does still stay in the crevices, so you can still detail some furniture that way. Once I think I'm done with the top, I'll step back and take a look to make sure that I like how it's coming along. After that, I'll continue glazing the sides, the front, and the drawers. It's important to take a step back every once in a while and make sure that everything is matching depending on how soon you rub the stain off, how clean your rag is, and how hard you try to rub the stain off. You might end up with sections looking a little different if you don't pay close attention. Again, once I'm done with my glazing, I take a step back to make sure that I like how everything is looking. Looks good to me. Now I can move on to applying my top coat. I'll be spraying this Parks Pro water-based polyurethane out of my Graco Project Painter Plus. When I spray water-based polyurethane, I typically do two to three thin coats, giving them about 15 to 30 minutes to dry in between each coat, depending on the weather. After those two or three light coats, I'll knock down any rough spots with 320 grit sandpaper and spray one thicker final coat, which allows me to get a factory-like finish with my top coat. This is what the finish looks like after the first coat has been applied. You can see that it's a little splotchy, but it's also starting to gloss up a little bit. This is the second coat being applied. I was able to get this coat complete in under 30 seconds. And here is the third coat being applied. I was able to apply this coat in under 20 seconds. Yeah. 
after about 20 or 30 minutes have passed, I'll knock down any rough spots on the surface of the dresser with 320 grit sandpaper. This ensures that my final coat will be as smooth as possible. On this last coat, I'll position the gun closer to the surface of the dresser and move my arm slower so that more product gets sprayed onto the surface. You have to make sure that you don't overdo it too much or you'll get runs and drips in your finish, which is just going to give you more work to do. It's normal for water-based polyurethane to look milky whenever it's wet, but as it dries, it should clear up. After this fourth coat, I noticed the top wasn't as smooth as I wanted it, so I applied one more final coat and that did the trick. With the top coat finished, I used some Dixie Belle gold gilding wax to highlight the edges of the dresser. All you do is rub your finger in the wax and apply it on the dresser back and forth, back and forth until you get as much gold on there as you want. This process does take a little bit of time, but the results are well worth it. After I had done the majority of the body, I felt like the drawers were looking like they needed some attention. The original drawers on the first piece that I did for the customer had gold around the edges, so I added just a hint of gold to the edges of the drawers to tie everything in together. I was really happy how everything came out with the gold. The last thing I need to do is top everything off with the hardware. I gave it all a good scrubbing and then sprayed it with a few coats of this Rust-Oleum Oil Rub Bronze Metallic Spray Paint. After I let that dry, I used the same gold gilding wax to highlight the details on the hardware so it matches the gold on the dresser. While this finish is fairly durable, it would be a good idea to come back and top coat it with a few coats of water-based polyurethane for added protection. With the hardware refinished, all I had left to do was put it on and this piece is done. I'm very excited with how this piece turned out. It was a challenge to try and duplicate a finish that I'd worked on last year without having that finish right in front of me, but everything came out as planned and the customer loved it. Let me know what you think about this project down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed so you get notifications whenever I post out a new video or go live. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see y'all again soon.